I also had a, an opportunity to visit SpaceX in, um, in Los Angeles. And what impressed me about that place was that it really looked like some guy's workshop, not a place where you build rockets and hatch dragons. And that was impressive to me that you can do these amazing things um, in a very, very simple uh, looking, looking uh, facility. So I'm going to talk about uh, what to expect in 2030. Um, and it's even 10 years is going to be very difficult to predict what, what is going to happen because um, the technology development is so fast today. So we can only do some, make some predictions based on what trends we see today and what product development takes place today. But I believe that anyone um, investing in ships today want to know, um, will the ships built today or operating today, will they be obsolete in 10 years? 10 years is not a long time. So um, Mrs. Lascaridis already talked about data and the importance of data. Um, the data is important today because we have um, increased connectivity, we have increased analytics capabilities. So all this data that we are already collecting will be um, enabled, um, will enable us to, to make better decisions. Um, but there will be also a lot of um, third parties that are going to look at the data from the vessels. Um, the charters will look at increasingly the performance data um, of, from the ships. Um, they may already implement uh, certain emission requirements even in advance of the regulations. And predictive vetting and rating that is already taking place is going to have a very solid foundation by 2030. Um, also, performance data will be used to evaluate your vessels, ben benchmark vessels um, against other vessels. And classification will use um, condition data to, to um, improve survey planning and also move away from um, calendar-based um, surveys to more um, condition-based surveys um, and, and predictive maintenance. So because of the importance of data, it's really important that, um, that the data is well managed, that you know your data, you know the quality of the data, you have cybersecurity in place, it will become very important to understand your data because other people are going to make decisions based on your data. Another um, development that we know for sure that is, will be taking place is the um, IMO greenhouse gas um, strategy and the targets. By 2030, the target to reduce CO2 um, intensity, so that is CO2 um, emissions per cargo transport. Um, the target is 40% um, and, and targeting 70% um, um, in the future. And by 2050, the target is to reduce um, the total greenhouse gas um, emissions by 50%. Um, and there's going to be a review of EEDI um, requirements for new ships. So. This will require certain steps to, to be taken, and 2023 is the date when IMO is going to come up with the final greenhouse gas strategy and decide what um, short-term, mid-term, and long-term measures will be required from, from the industry. There will be data already available by that time. Um, IMO um, data collection has then been in place for a few years. Uh, that data will be analyzed. There will be a new greenhouse gas study, um, and um, this will be the, the basis for making the decisions on, on the uh, final strategy. Now, it's going to be difficult to really change the ship design to reach all these targets because a lot of work has already been done to make the ships um, more efficient. So it will be a combination of, of actions that, that are needed to, to meet some of these targets. Um, there will be still advances in, in ship um, technology, um, improvement in ship operations. There will be new low carbon fuels and, and propulsion. And, and it will also include probably some market-based measures. 
And speed reduction is, of course, one of the, the ways um, that emissions can be reduced quite effectively because of the relationship between uh, speed and power. So, as I mentioned earlier, some of the things that will change shipping industry is ever-increasing automation, increasing connectivity, increasing um, data um, analytics capabilities, computing power, and this will um, introduce um, certain new technologies, which many of them are probably going to come from the autonomous ship development. Now, I do not believe that there will be autonomous or at least unmanned ships um, in the worldwide trade anytime soon. I do not believe in that. But I do believe that some of the technology that, that comes out of these projects can be um, implemented on, on the ships of today. So you do not need to have new ships. Your ship is not going to be obsolete, but you may want to retrofit some of the new technology on board the vessels. There will be um, navigational aids, ba aids based on situational awareness, uh, collision avoidance techniques, um, and also um, one of the benefits that I believe that comes from these projects will be the increased reliability and robustness of systems on board because we cannot have any level of autonomy on board with the current reliability that we have. That needs to be improved. There will be alternative propulsion and fuel options available, and there will be Internet of Things on board the vessels, and also Internet of Ships, and there will be more focus on the fleet performance and effectiveness rather than just the ship itself. The other benefit, I believe, from the, of the autonomous um, pilots is that they will offer a um, controlled trials for new technology. Um, the industry has been hit by new technology that has uh, been introduced to, to comply with the, some of the environmental requirements. And I believe that now industry will not accept new technology unless it's fully tested and it has cost benefit. So, technology to watch, um, Admiral Nodo already mentioned about 3D printing. I truly believe that it can be a game changer because if you combine 3D printing with increased reliability and predictive maintenance, it really can be a game changer for the industry. Now, what we do need is we need increased reliability and robustness on board the vessels. And to, to achieve this, I believe that we need to have some more level of standardization and also robotics to reduce the variability in the um, construction quality. Now, I'm not sure if the industry is quite ready for this because the industry wants to have every ship or at least a series of ships as a pro prototype so that it meets the customized needs of every, every owner. However, if we do want to have improved quality, I believe some level of standardization is needed. That concludes my views for the 2030. Uh, what I would like to say is that this work will require a lot of investment of resources, a lot of product development, and it has to be done in such a way that the industry will perform environmentally safely, uh, environmentally friendly way and even safer than it is today. And if we do this work diligently, I, I believe that the, the ships and the industry will remain sustainable in the future for, the, for you young people. Thank you.